Have you finally scaled up your reaction and now need at least 50 milliliters or more of dry solvent to dissolve your substrate? If so, you're in the right place. Today we're going to learn the cannulation technique to help you with a quick, easy dry solvent transfer. So first, take your oven dry length flask and make sure that your flask is properly sealed with a tightened stopcock and septum. Connect the Schlenk flask and dry solvent container to your Schlenk line. Here the solvent is under nitrogen or positive pressure and the flask is cooling under vacuum, negative pressure. First step, open your flask to nitrogen. Now both your solvent and flask should be under positive pressure. Step 2. Take a double-headed needle and push one side into the septum of your solvents container and connect the other side to your flask. Keep the tip in your solvent container just above the liquid surface right in the nitrogen region. Do not push the needle into the solvents just yet. Step 3. Once both sides of the needle are inserted to connect the solvent container and flask, now it is time to push the needle into the solvent's liquid. Doing it this way minimizes contaminants from entering the system. Step four, open your flask to vacuum just slightly to create a negative pressure in your flask and pull solvent out from the closed container just like a straw. Finally, step five, to stop solvent's flow, open the flask to nitrogen to reintroduce positive pressure. This will rebalance the pressure across the system and stop liquid from flowing. And that's all there is to it. You got it? Great. Let's go ahead and see this process again with a round bottom flask instead of a Schlenk flask. We are going through the same motions, but now the tubing is simply connected with a needle through the rubber septum on top. Here, roughly 200 milliliters of solvent is being transferred. The black line on the round bottom marks where the 200 milliliter volume line is on the flask. In my reaction preparation, I usually measure out 200 mils, or however much volume I wish to transfer, of water into a graduated cylinder. Pour the water into my flask, draw the line around the round bottom at the meniscus with my sharpie, and then I let the flask dry in the oven overnight. In your cleanup, a quick acetone wipe will easily take your markings off. This part also isn't shown in the video, but putting the substrate and a clean oven dried stir bar into the flask before the solvent transfer is usually easier versus adding anything to the solvent after. If you wanted to keep the substrate under a more rigorous anaerobic system, you can oven dry your flask and stir bar together, then transfer your substrate into your flask in a glove box. If the solvent flow slows down, you can simply open the flask to slight vacuum again to speed up the flow. So fun fact, you may have noticed that I have different colored gloves on each hand. At the time of filming this video, I actually had a cyst on my right hand that required me to wear an extra large glove. The cyst was benign, don't worry, but it also hindered movement a bit, which is why I'm also, also mostly trying to use my left hand for this setup. When I showed this video to my coworker, he asked me why I was only using one hand, and this was the reason why. Using both hands is much safer than using one hand, so please, if you're watching this and you have both hands, please use both hands to hold things, clamp things, and just do things in the lab in general. The only exception to this rule is the super cool chemist I met who only had one functional hand but still managed research and graduated with a degree in chemistry. They are, I think, the only person I would trust doing one-handed chemistry safely. And there we have it. I hope you learned something new in this video. You're all set for your large volume solvent transfers. Good luck, chemists.